The most dangerous part of your body. The tongue. James explains the destructive nature of the tongue. Our tongues can burn like a raging fire. Proverbs 16, 26 to 28, Amplified Bible. The appetite of a worker works for him, for his hunger urges him on. A worthless man devises and digs up evil, and the words on his lips are like a scorching fire. The perverse man spreads strife, and one who gossips separates intimate friends. A fire's warmth serves many purposes, all to a person's advantage. But if it is not controlled, fire can be a terrible master. Fire is used to prepare our food and keep our bodies warm, and it can injure and destroy people. A heated debate can be sparked by the careless use of just a few words. He says the tongue gets its destructive power from hell itself. James 3, 5-7, through 7, Amplified Bible In the same sense, the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. See by comparison how great a forest is set on fire by a small spark. And the tongue is, in a sense, a fire, the very world of injustice and unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members as that which contaminates the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life the cycle of man's existence, and is itself on fire by hell, Gehenna. For every species of beasts and bird, of reptile and sea creature is tamed and has been tamed by the human race. The tongue also is like a wild animal. We tame the tiger, not our tongue. We dominate the wolf, not our words. People tear down and hurt others with their words. The tongue is venomous, striking with a poisonous bite like an adder. Third, James explains the deceptive nature of the tongue. Our sinful tongue can produce angry words like a fountain of bitter water for others, but kind words can be like a fountain of fresh water for ourselves. Proverbs 10, 10 through 12, Amplified Bible. He who maliciously winks the eye of evil intent causes trouble, and the babbling fool who is arrogant and thinks himself wise will come to ruin. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, and his words of wisdom are a source of blessing. But the mouth of the wicked conceals violence and evil. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers and overwhelms all transgressions forgiving and overlooking another's faults. We pray to God with the same tongue that we use to curse people. James warns against this inconsistency. James 3, 9-11 With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth come both blessings and cursing. These things, my brothers, should not be this way. For we have a moral obligation to speak in a manner that reflects our fear of God and profound respect for His precepts. Does a spring send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? James 3.13-18 Amplified Bible Who among you is wise and intelligent? Let him by his good conduct show his good deeds with the gentleness and humility of true wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be arrogant, and as a result be in defiance of the truth. This superficial wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, secular, natural, unspiritual, even demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder, unrest, rebellion, and every evil thing and morally degrading practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, morally and spiritually undefiled, then peace-loving, courteous, considerate, gentle, reasonable, and willing to listen, full of compassion and good fruits. It is unwavering without self-righteous hypocrisy and self-serving guile. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness, spiritual maturity, 
is sown in peace by those who make peace, by actively encouraging goodwill between individuals. James tells his readers of a remedy for the infection of unhealthy speech. James says, Do you want to know what a wise man is? I'll not only tell you, I'll show you. One of the best methods of Christian teaching is demonstrating the word of God through one's life. James called for doing God's word, not merely speaking it. A truly wise person is one whose life is marked by humility and good works. Concerning wisdom, James contrasts two very different lifestyles, earthly and heavenly. First, he gives three characteristics of earthly wisdom. It's questionable stimuli, it's inadequate source and it's undeniable signs. According to James, earthly wisdom is fueled by envy and strife, which only ends in confusion and every evil work. Believers are to set their minds on things above. Colossians 3, 2, Amplified Bible Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above, the heavenly things, not on things that are on the earth, which have only temporal value. Earthly wisdom is sensual, and absence is the necessary hunger for spiritual things. This wisdom is not from God, but from Satan himself, and the manifestations of earthly wisdom are alarming. 1 John 2.16, Amplified Bible For all that is in the world, the lust and sensual craving of the flesh, and the lust and longing of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence is one's resource, or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are from the world. An atmosphere of instability distorts perception. Discord among brothers and sisters reigns. Proverbs 6, 18-20, Amplified Bible A heart that creates wicked plans, feet that run swiftly to evil. A false witness who breathes out lies, even half-truths. And one who spreads discord, rumors among brothers. My son, be guided by your father's God-given commandment, instruction, and do not reject the teaching of your mother. James 3, 17-18, Amplified Bible But the wisdom from above is first pure, morally and spiritually undefiled, then peace-loving, courteous, considerate, gentle, reasonable, and willing to listen, full of compassion and good fruits. It is unwavering without self-righteous hypocrisy and self-serving guile. And the seed whose fruit is righteous, spiritual maturity, is sown in peace by those who make peace, by actively encouraging goodwill between individuals. In contrast, James offers wisdom from heaven. God's wisdom is clean in its desire, and ulterior motives are scrubbed. 1 Timothy 5, 21-22, Amplified Bible I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus and his chosen angels that you guard and keep these rules without bias, doing nothing out of favoritism. Do not hurry to lay hand on anyone, ordaining and approving someone for ministry or an office in the church, or in reinstating expelled offenders, and thereby shall in the sins of others Keep yourself free from sin. In addition to being pure, godly wisdom promotes a sincere love for peace. It is considerate. It is willing to ask for forgiveness, even when it is not required. The believer equipped with heavenly wisdom is kind, yet does not sacrifice integrity for truth. Heavenly wisdom is also constant in its deliberations. It indicates no exceptional treatment to those who have much while neglected the needs of those who offer nothing in return. Heavenly wisdom thrives without hypocrisy. So guard your tongue. What force lies within our own words? James emphasizes the tongue, which dispenses both blessing and cursing. Because leaders speak so frequently and carry such weight with their words, they must always pay close attention. 
James identified the following as the four functions of the tongue. Number one, function one, to gauge. The tongue is a spiritual meter. If we can bridle it, we can bridle the whole body. It becomes the yardstick by which our maturity is measured. It is impossible for our faith ever to rank higher than our words. Number two, the second function is to direct. The tongue is like a horse's bit, a ship's rudder, or kindling wood. It starts things in motions. If we can exercise control over it, we can direct the course of our lives in the same way that a bit directs a horse or a rudder guides a ship. Number three, function three, to gird. The tongue is a very powerful organ. Like a massive fire, it can ruin or bless our entire lives. This power was never intended to kill us, but rather to guide us in the right direction. Number four, function four, to guard. The tongue is a window into the knowledge that lies dormant within us. The power of our words can make or break our reputation. James asks, Is yours a good guard or a bad one? Does it create peace or reveal hypocrisy?